Hello and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. In this lesson I'm going to respond to a question from a viewer to explain the difference between the two types of matches when you use the VLOOKUP function. The two types of matches for VLOOKUP are approximate match, which is the default return, or an exact match. Now the approximate match, as I mentioned, is the default return for a VLOOKUP. If you want an approximate match, you must sort the leftmost column in your lookup array. You can optionally include the word true as your fourth argument, or since it is the default, just omit it. Don't include the fourth argument. On the other hand, for the exact match, the key to understanding how to return an exact match is to make sure that you use the word false is the fourth argument in the VLOOKUP function. It's not necessary to sort the values in the leftmost column, but you must include false. All right, let's see how this works for an approximate match applied to a gratuity table. And my second example will be using an approximate match to convert a numeric score into a letter score. All right, let's come back here to the gratuity table. What we want to do is we want to use VLOOKUP to look at this cell and find the nearest match, the approximate match for this cell value in the leftmost column of this named array. And then when it finds the nearest match to go over to the second column and return that as the value. So over here, first off, let's step back. I recommend when you are using uh, VLOOKUP that you use a named range as your array. So in this case, the name range that I'm going to be using in my argument is tip table. So here the array is going to be from absolute A9 down through absolute D32. All right, let's come back here and see how this works. I want to be able to look up a match for this value, and this is the way that I like to explain it. We want to be able to look up a match for the value in this cell by looking in the leftmost column of an array. And again, remember that it's important that you sort the leftmost column in ascending order, because the V in VLOOKUP stands for vertical. We're looking vertically down in the leftmost column for the nearest match to this cell. When we find the nearest match in this name range called tip table, what we want to return, in other words, what we're looking up, is the amount of a 10% gratuity. So that's why we use the second column, because counting from the left, column one, column two, the 10% gratuity is in the second column. Now, the fourth argument, as you can see, is in brackets, which indicates that it's an optional argument. So if I want an approximate match, I can include the word true or I can omit it. I'm going to get the same result. All right, now let's come over here and take a look at, at this cell, which I want to return the value in the third column. This time I'm going to write the formula from scratch. Equals VLOOKUP. And what I want to do is I want to look for a match for the value in this cell. Now since I'm going to be copying this over, I want to make the uh, lookup value an absolute cell reference. If I use the F4 keyboard shortcut, it makes it an absolute uh, cell reference, comma for the second argument. Again, remember that I like to use name ranges. So since I've named this range for the array um, tip table, I can use the keyboard shortcut F3 to bring up the paste names dialog box, select that name range for the array, use a comma, and now the column index, which has the value for my return, is going to be in the first, second, it's going to be in the third column. So use the number three, and it's not necessary for me to include the word true because it's an optional argument. So write parentheses to close this off, and there you go. So $2.25 is the recommended gratuity of 15% when I find the approximate ma uh, match for this value. So $19.98 is in this range. 
it's greater than or equal to $15, but it's less than $20. So the way to understand this is to look at the two arguments. In an approximate match, we're looking for a range that falls into this, uh, that uses these two uh, criteria. The lower value will be greater than or equal to the cell that we're looking up, or it is going to be less than the higher value. So if I change this dollar amount up here, let's make this uh, uh, $35.75. Now we're going to be looking up this value. So when I look up in the sorted in ascending order range, I want to look for a value that is greater than or equal to $30, uh, but less than $35. So now what I'm getting is I'm getting $3 over here for 10%. I'm getting $4.50. I'm getting $6. All right, now let's come over here to another example of a letter grade. In this case, I have a table that's set up. And again, I could name it. In this case, it's such a short table that I decided not to name it. So we're going to be looking in this array. What I want to be able to do, and I'm going to change this value here for the moment. I'm going to change it to 20, 39. My VLOOKUP function is over here. I want to be able to look up the value for the student score. Where do I want to look for it? I want to look for it in the leftmost column of an array. Now, in this case, as I said, it's a short um, table, so I just use dollar sign $A, dollar sign $5, colon, uh, uh, dollar sign B, dollar sign 9. So in this absolute cell reference range, because I'm going to be copying this down, that's why I want to use that absolute reference. Then what I want to do is I want to return the value in the second column. I want to convert a numeric score into a letter grade score. And again, I'm looking for an approximate match, so I do not need to include the fourth argument. If I wish to do that, I would use the comma and then use the word true. And then I have my approximate um, range. I have my uh, approximate return. So notice over here that I'm looking for a value in this range. It's greater than or equal to 0, but it's less than 40. So it's going to return F. If I change this to 40 numerically over here, you see it turns into a D because it's looking for a value in this range. It's greater than or equal to 40, but it's less than 70. Now, if you didn't discover VLOOKUP before this lesson in order to return a letter grade, you would have had to write a very complicated nested if function. Now, notice over here that we're hard coding the values. Another advantage of using VLOOKUP rather than the nested if is what if we wanted to have different values over here? In other words, let's say it was a, a, a response to a customer service. So over here, we could have in here excellent. And now you see how the value changes over here. We could turn this into very good, and etc. So many advantages to using VLOOKUP rather than nested IF functions. All right, now let's take a look at an exact match. In this case, we have the hours worked by employees. Now, we certainly want to have an exact match. We don't want to uh, pay Abigail Adams at the same rate as Dave Davidson. So over here, what I've done is, of course, I have named this range over here. So this range in the formula, I'm going to be looking up inside the employees. I have also used data validation over here. So I have all of my numbers in my leftmost column that I can pick from. So I want to be able to return the last name, first name, hourly rate, and regular hours for employee 442. So when I write this, I want to get the information for employee 442, Janet Jacobson. So equals VLOOKUP. And what I want to do is I want to look up this value. And again, I'm going to be copying this over, so I want to make this an absolute cell reference, comma. The table array is this array over here. And again, remember, I've named it. So I'll use the F3 keyboard shortcut to say, look inside the table array called employees, comma. My third argument is I want to return the last name. So the last name counting from the left is column number two, comma. 
Now again, remember for an exact match, you must include false as your closing argument. So there we go. So Jacobson is the last name from ploy 442. Now I can easily copy this over and make one change. When I want to return the first name, the first name is in column 3. So I'll change this third argument from a 2 into a 3. Likewise, I can copy this over and make one change. The hourly rate is in column 1, 2, 3, 4. So my third argument I'll change from a 3 into a 4. And again, I'm leaving false in there. Finally, I'll copy this over and I'll change the 4 into a 5. And now this column is going to be calculated. So what I want to do over here is I want to say equals point to this cell and I want to multiply it by this cell. Click OK. Now the beauty is that I have the drop-down list. So if I want to look at another employee, for example employee 634, you can see that 634 is Lisa Larson. Coming over here and comparing it, you can see that that's exactly correct. Now let's return to our first employee, Janet uh, Jacobson, and see what would happen if we used an approximate match rather than an exact match. So what I want to do over here is I'm going to edit this and I'm going to omit the fourth argument. So get it from the comma, click over here, close, and now you see it return Gustafson because it's looking in the leftmost column and I've not sorted this. And it's looking for the first instance of a close match. So by looking for 442 coming down here, it's going to bring this number up because it's going to be greater than or equal to the lowest value, but less than the high value. So you see, you definitely want to have the exact match. I'll use Control Z to undo that. And again, if you use the dated validation for a drop-down list and have the formula set up correctly, employee 317, as you can see over here, is Nancy Nelson. So there you've learned how to uh, distinguish when and how to set up an approximate match, when and how to set up an exact match. And just a reminder that you can find more tips like this on my DVD-ROM, The 50 Best Tips for Excel. You can look for it on my online shopping cart, shop.thecompanyrocks.com. And I will look for you in the next lesson.